what to do. All right, um, so I started the recording now. Uh, for folks who are watching this later, uh, I was just mentioning that this, the, the point of this meeting is to, um, to carry through some of the conversations that we have at the Developer Summit throughout the year um, and, and make sure that we're continuing to have, um, you know, we're continuing to have conversations that are at, you know, at a high level, um, not just about particular bugs or, or pull requests um, like we do uh, typically nowadays. So the first thing that we want to tackle is um, how to make sure that all the features in ZFS are available on all the different platforms. Um, so I shared my screen. I also put in the chat for the Zoom. Um, there's links if you don't have them. Uh, that's not the right one. Okay, cool. So uh, there's an agenda document here. Um, thank you, Karen, for um, putting this together and taking notes. Um, if you have, uh, I'm going to drive the agenda um, through just this this first item. It'll probably take most of the time today. But if you have ideas for future agenda items. Um, we'll have the opportunity to add those uh, at the end of the meeting, and I'll try to leave five to ten minutes for kind of open discussion of other um, other topics at the end of the meeting. Uh, and I know thirty minutes is probably not going to be long enough to actually cover everything that we want to today, um, and I think that's okay. We'll have this meeting again uh, in four weeks, uh, so um, we can we can pick it up there. Um, I know like everybody's time is precious, and I don't want to you know. I don't want to set up an hour long meeting that we then only spend 20 minutes in each time. I'd rather have the consistency of having folks show up, not just the you know great turnout that we have today, but show up at future meetings as well and can continue this conversation. Okay, so to dive right into it, um, I have the spreadsheet here. And um, at the top of the spreadsheet, we have uh, some recent features that have been integrated into all the platforms. So great job, everybody. Um, it's available, all these are available on Illumos, Linux, FreeBSD, OS X, and Windows. Um, and the next section is, is the one that I want to discuss today, which is features that have been integrated to one platform, but not yet to all of them. Um, and the, the goal, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the technical nitty gritty. I want to make sure that we um, know that we're kind of all on the same page as to, uh, is this project on track to be integrated into the platform? Um, and if not, then can we solicit some more resources to help uh, help complete it? Um, so the first one on here is channel programs. Um, good news, it's on uh, the three most used platforms, uh, Illumos, Linux, and FreeBSD. Um, and on OS 10 and Windows, um, Jorgen, uh, you, uh, Jorgen is kind of the one man, uh, as far as I know, Jorgen, unless you, you want to correct me, um, Almost the uh, one the almost the one sole engineer working on these two platforms. So, uh, do a great job. If you guys don't know about uh, Jorgen's work on this, uh, I, you should go check out the his talk from last year, 2017, um, OpenZFS Developer Summit, when he announced the Windows port and also gave an overview of the OS 10 port. Um, so, Jorgen, I saw that you put in here uh, that for channel programs. Um, you, uh, it, it's mostly ready, but you need some um, long jump uh, stuff to be ported that, that Don Brady did. Is that right. something that you, um, is that something that you are working on or that you need help from Don or other folks with? It's more or less just a matter of having, you know, finding four hours or something and sit down and do it. So it, it should be fine. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and mark this as um, yellow to indicate um, that like we have an owner, the owner is working on it. It's, it's on track. They just, they just need more time to work on it. So that's great. Um, on to the next item, um, Zipl initialize. So the, the one platform that is outstanding here is the Linux port. Um, this says here that Tim Chase is did the initial port, and that George is discussing is discussing some outstanding issues with Brian. Um, George, are you on? Can you comment on where that's at, and uh, if those are being worked on, or and if Tim is working on them, or if or if you and Brian need to yes, be so, into this? So Brian and I are, are kind of discussing a follow on. Uh, we want to just make sure that the follow on changes are kind of at a good state. 
before we integrate the initial PR. So uh, the follow-on changes will be also applicable to all um, to all platforms, but effectively their their performance enhancements to the initialized code. Um, okay. So the, the plan will be to integrate the initial PR to kind of be the same with a follow-on PR coming shortly after that we can then distribute across all the platforms. And, and are I, you I am working are you on that. working on that? Okay. Yeah. So, so Brian's call is Brian like waiting for essentially like the first yeah, is he waiting for a PR on for you to op open on that? So I have a, a work in progress PR that Brian has done some initial performance testing. It looks like it's pretty good. I need to go do some cleanup on it because we wanted to just kind of create a, a baseline. Um, I think there's one more thing that I want to investigate to see if we can make a further improvement, but it, we're pretty close to like having it to a point where we can start doing reviews on it. Okay, cool. Um, I'll, I'll try to clean it, clean this up later on. I'm just kind of putting my stream of consciousness now so we don't forget it. All right, on to the big one, uh, encryption. So uh, encryption is in Linux and OS 10 and Windows. Um, the two out remaining platforms are Illumos and FreeBSD. Um, on Illumos, uh, Jorgen uh, did the port and he's been keeping this synced with, um, with the subsequent changes on Linux. Um, but uh, my understanding, Jorgen, is that um, you, you don't really have the, the time or, or inclination to debug um, all the issues that have been reported. So um, I've, been, I've been helping out on that a bit. Um, Tom's been helping out on that a bit, uh, but uh, I think we're, we're both kind of getting a little bit, um, we, we put in a lot of effort and we'd like to see this come to completion, but we could definitely use some more help with this. Um, so uh, is anybody else, has anybody else started working on this, looking at it? Um, so we, uh, Alex, Wilson at Joint has spent some amount of time uh, looking at the, <clears throat> we received a crash dump from, I can't remember uh, who exactly. Yeah, Gerno. Right, yeah. yes, yes. And uh, we've looked at that and I think the, we hit kind of a dead end because the arc pages do not appear in the dump. Uh, and we really wanted to be able to see. Yeah. You know, I think it's basically as I recall, I talked to Alex about this yesterday. As I recall, it's failing uh, uh, HMAC validation yep. on something that we don't have in the dump to, to, to have a, a closer look at. So one thing we can try and do is reproduce it. Uh, Alex has tried uh, to trivially to reproduce it. And we haven't been able to do that yet. The other thing is we can maybe go back to Gono and get him to do a, a dump with uh, ARC contents included, which would be bigger, but at least would probably give us something uh, closer to look at. So we'll try and follow up on that. Uh, okay. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I've had good luck um, giving him patches or just like pushing patches up okay. um, to, for him to try out. Um, is he I think, building his own bits or is it? Yeah, so he's okay. running on SmartOS oh. and he's, he's done a port or like you know, merge of the pull request into SmartOS okay. and, do, and he's done the build himself. Um, he doesn't seem, from from what I've talked with him only a very little bit, it seems like he is not like a developer per se, um, but you know he know, uh, he at least knows how to you know merge the code and do builds and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and get dumps. And um, on the particular issue that you're mentioning, I'm not uh, of, of wanting to get the user data. Um, I had uh, I found it difficult to make, to get all the ARC data included in the dump. Okay. Um, in a way that worked right. But um, what I did when I was trying to run down something else was I just changed the code to add something that was like, oh, like when I'm getting this failure, just like, mal you know, came malloc, some new buffer, copy, copy it somewhere. Yeah. this stuff into there into like a global variable and like put in a global variable and then panic, you right. know, yeah. rather than just saying the assertion failure. And, um, and that panic, works fine. Panic debuff or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I mean, if he's on SmartOS, it's pretty easy for us to also just give him images to test too. So yeah, I mean, if you if you guys have done that, then that might be even easier. 
All right. Well, we'll, we'll keep looking into that. Uh, so. Cool. Well, that's great um, to hear that you guys are, are looking at that. Um, I also tried to reproduce it um, and wasn't able to. Um, Alex, Alex mentioned to me that he seemed to think it was possibly something to, like it was only going to be reproducible with very long running send receive operations possibly. So. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, and he's also using Zvols, uh, right. which um, like I couldn't see, which are a little bit special um, only because uh, the, like a lot of the problems that he's run into, it seemed like it's with the HMAC validation of the denode block, like the block of denodes, which is, which is handled specially by encryption and by encrypted send and receive. Um, and in, with Zvols, um, so with, with non-Zvols, with file systems, um, basically every block of denodes has bonus buffers, which cause us to have to like decrypt stuff earlier um, in using a different code path. But with Zvols, there's no bonus buffers. We just don't happen to use them with Zvols. Um, and so the decryption and uh, Mac validation happens later and it's different in a different code path. And so it's possible that that's related to the problem. All right, well, we'll we will uh, take a closer look at that one, so. Cool. If you need any uh, help with that, feel free to reach out to me uh, either directly or on Slack. Or sounds good. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, and so how about on FreeBSD? Uh, I don't know if either of these people are on the call, but uh, Alan, do you know are. about? Uh, so we have a, a call for testing patch set uh, and users are starting to run it. Um, once the FreeBSD 12 code freeze is over, uh, this will probably be uh, moving forward again and uh, hopefully make it into FreeBSD soonish. Uh, I don't know how many outstanding issues there are. Uh, uh, Dexter or Mav, do you have any insight? According to Sean, uh, it's working for him, but I'm not sure how much uh, third party testing it hit. So several people tried it, but uh, I don't know whether any for with any serious workload, serious production. Okay. So, so FreeBSD head freeze is definitely one of stopper to start integrating at least some things like encryption algorithm and so on. Uh, yeah, but mostly Sean is now working on different things considering that part is done, just waiting for integration. Okay. Cool. Um, I know encryption is kind of a big, it, it's probably the biggest project on here and probably has the most work to get completed. Does anybody else have kind of more questions or comments? Um, I mean, one thing that one thing that is a little bit concerning to me is that um, you know we we have basically one person that's been reporting bugs on Illumos, encryption bugs on Illumos for the past like six months or so, um, and we haven't heard like similar bugs reported on Linux or in the FreeBSD port. So um, I don't know if that's just like his, his use case is really unique uh, or if it isn't getting exercised as well on the other platforms or if there's a, the bug is actually specific to the most. Um, most of the bugs that I found when, you know, when working with the encryption stuff were, uh, were on Linux as well. Um, but there was like one really nasty bug on Lumos um, that was specific to Lumos. So. Yeah, I think uh, on FreeBSD it hasn't been that well tested yet. Um, hopefully once it's, uh, in a dev branch that people can more easily play with, uh, we'll get more testing. Okay. I think that a lot of these Has bugs anyone... also might exist in both code paths or like in, in both code bases, but I think Linux stresses different ones differently than, than Illumos does, particularly like you were saying with like the order that things get decrypted and, and things like that. I've seen before where, you know, things, uh, seem to exist in both places, but they just never happen. They ne never seem to show up on Linux for some reason or another. Gotcha. Has anyone shared their testing tools? 
Sorry, has anyone what the testing tools shared oh, their shared. testing tools for encryption? I don't think so. Um, the the person who's been testing on Illumos is is using SmartOS, and I it looks like I don't, like I'm not super familiar with SmartOS and kind of how it's typically used, but it looked like he had a bunch of um, Z vols that were being managed by um, you know some higher level of software. So. Uh, it's possible that somebody else doing something similar with SmartOS would um, exercise it in a similar way. We do make heavy use of ZVols for hardware virtualized guests, so it might not be as common in other places. All right. Yeah, definitely. If if folks do have tools that that they're using for testing. Um, share them. Uh, I suspect that a lot of people just uh, are doing their particular workload and not like actually trying to test encryption very much. They're just like, turn on encryption and keep doing what I've been doing um, and see if it blows up. I mean, and personally, like I, I haven't really tested it aside from running the, running the test suite and then um, looking at the dumps that I've gotten from other folks. Um, cool. So let's move on to the next uh, item was uh, multi-mount protection or multi-import protection as it's called. Um, so this is available on Linux uh, and no other platforms. Um, I will bring up that, you know, it, if we, if we, if there's something here that's not actually applicable to other platforms or people decide, yeah, that's cool, but it's not really worth it for us to port, like that's okay. Um, I'm, I don't think that, you know, we, Sure, like it would be great to have everything on every platform, but um, we are balancing, uh, you know, the effort that we're spending with the benefit from it. Um, and with encryption, like the, the benefit is really huge. You know, everybody really wants encryption um, on their platforms, so I think it's worth it. Um, multi mount protection, um, I like. Seems like it would be useful on every platform. I know, um, you know, George Wilson. I know you've debugged a lot of uh, uh, concurrent pool import on multiple systems that caused uh, encryption that that caused uh, that caused corruption um, and this would hopefully have protected us against that um, but as far as I know nobody's working on porting this to Illumos um, why don't we start with FreeBSD since Alan uh, you put your name in here um, what uh, are you are you interested in importing this do you have time to port this are you interested uh, in finding yes, someone else I, from the community uh, to do it I have customers that would benefit from it. Uh, so uh, I will either get it done myself or pay someone to do it. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one at least as yellow, even though you don't have, it's not in progress, but we do have an owner who uh, has committed to working on it. Okay. Um, how about on Illumos? Uh, we, at Delphix, we don't have this problem. We don't have, uh, you know, the systems aren't that we ship are not configured to be able to um, import the same pool concurrently. So this is not really a, a business need for us. Um, this is also true for Joint. We don't really do network storage either. So okay. um, I think if the FreeBSD stuff pans out, um, we'll probably, I mean, I think we, we in general probably don't want to diverge on purpose um, yeah. and we'll probably try and pull it in as a part of just trying to sync everything up from say like I mean one thing we we talked about at the conference right was that we would look at uh, trying to be in sync with a ZFS on lease uh, on Linux release branch uh, sometime in the future as part of like yeah. a, like a one big collect everything that we haven't imported do some do a lot of testing and um, so that this would probably get vacuumed up as part of one of those efforts in the future, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, it sounds like those are kind of two potentially different paths to getting this in. One is um, like because FreeBSD and Illumos ZFS code is so close, you could wait for it to be ported to FreeBSD and then hopefully that patch applies more cleanly to Illumos. And the other is um, as some kind of wholesale pulling in of um, all the diffs with, with Linux, which seems like 
a big lift. I think it is probably going to be a big lift, but I think we in in the in the limit for us, I think it, it makes sense to for us to um, set up machinery and process on our end to start to at least assess the the actual size of the lift uh, right. as, as a bulk import operation. I'm not saying that we're going to just import everything, but like we we uh, we haven't really tried yet, so like maybe it won't be that bad. I don't gotcha. Know. Yeah. And we've some... considered something similar for FreeBSD. Like when I was looking at uh, pulling over some code from ZFS on Linux for identifying VDEV names in the zpool iostat command, uh, the amount of divergence between our code base and the ZFS on Linux one was so big. It's like, you know, uh, pulling things out of order seems like it's going to be a lot more work over time than trying to get to some snapshot and then work forward from there. Mm hmm yeah, I think that if you consider a, like a like what is released as zero eight zero or whatever as like a it's a fixed point in time that we can go and start to look at how to get to there specifically it might be a little more manageable. But again, we haven't haven't started that process yet. We've got some uh, a few uh, other in house bugs to get to, and then we're going to try and set up some testing and yeah, merge infrastructure to see how that goes. So. Gotcha. All right. Um, and, uh, for OS 10 and windows, uh, Jorgen, do you see a need for this? Are you planning to do this? Um, or, or do you, do you envision just kind of leaving these changes? Uh, this is about the MMP we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think I already sort of started on pulling in commits. I'm set up to pull in commits both from Illumos and Linux without issue, but I think it needed parallel mounts first. Does that sound right? Or is uh, that it shouldn't similar? depend on parallel mounts. Yeah, I don't think parallel mounts is, at least the Illumos parallel mounts is in Linux. Yeah. Um, I don't think I had a problem with MMP, but I can't do parallel mounts, at least um, since I have to call disk util to mount it, and that's serial, so it kind of seemed pointless. But I will most likely pull it in so that we don't diverge. But most likely I will pull in MMP without issues. Okay. Cool. Sounds like you'll, it's on you to do this, but it's just low priority since it's not really uh, a feature that people will probably use on those platforms. Probably not, but it's, um, I do the uh, pull in the commits like once a month and it usually takes a day or two. So it, yeah, I'll do, I'll get around to it soon. All right. Um, cool. The next thing on the list here is sequential scrub and resilver, uh, which is on Linux and FreeBSD. Um, there's a pull request open for Illumos um, by somebody, their handle is Kithra. Uh, I don't know who they are. Is or it's a he, he, he ported uh, Linux patches to FreeBSD, and at the point when we were close with Illumos, he created that pull request. After that point, we found out several small fallouts, which on FreeBSD and could be collected. But other than that, on FreeBSD, it works. Okay. I don't know what's the problem to land it on Illumos, but I, so, I suppose it should be easy. Two, d two days ago, uh, Tumas Sum also opened a review board thing. Oh. Um, that seems it's. The summary is ZFS sorted scans, but if you click through, it's it's in the ZFS and Linux repository. It's called sequential scrubs and resilvers. Uh, so I think it's the same thing, right? There's, there wasn't a second one of those. One, one thing that I'd want to make sure, um, because I think this did kind of happen on FreeBSD a little bit. Um, so I believe there were three different things which were in different operating systems at different times, because the original code came from Sasha, who worked on it. Um, and then I took that, ported it to Linux, and while I was working on it, it got merged into FreeBSD before it was actually merged into Linux, which is where I did all the work. Then it was eventually completely merged into Linux. So I just want to make sure that we have, you know, that we have a consistent implementation everywhere. Um, they, they're not, like, all drastically different. That like I, like I said, they were all based on the same thing. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody has, you know, the latest version of it possible. Oh. 
Tom, I've pasted a link to the commit that I believe our current, as of two days ago, review board thing is based on. Is that the commit that covers all the things you just said? Where did you paste it? In the Zoom group chat thingy. Yeah, I see it there. I, I think that's right. It's the, it's the commit, the title is sequential scrubs and resilvers. That sounds correct. The only thing is, again, it could just be the, like that was also the name of the earlier version that did get ported to FreeB FreeBSD. Um, I'd imagine that that probably, I think they're all up to date, but I just want to make sure like that the, that everything your, got merged in correctly. It's your commit that went into ZOL. Okay, good. Yeah. Then that should be fine. Yeah. And, and Tom, um, we also did that, uh, the, like IO priority inheritance, uh, was that in the original commit or is that a follow on? That I believe was a pre commit. I think, I, I think. Okay. I think it was actually I can a check on follow that. on. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think. Yeah, I, th I thought so I too. I'm, I'm like 99% sure it was a separate commit. I just don't remember if it came before or after. Okay. So just, just so people are aware that there, there was a performance issue under certain workloads that you would want this follow on uh, commit for. That was the priority inherit priority inversion, ZAO priority yes. inversion. Yeah, I think that's the one. Uh, I'll try to find the commit. Okay. Um, so it sounds like uh, do we need to kind of resolve uh, who is going to drive this forward, whether it's uh, Thomas or um, the Kithrop in the uh, in the GitHub PR. I don't think Sean from FreeBSD is going to drive the one for Lumos. He just posted the work he had to, right. to give you guys a head start. Gotcha. So he's just like, hey, FYI, here's some code. Um, take it if you want it. Yeah, gotcha. it was, uh, after he ported it from Linux, our code was close enough to yours that yeah, posted. Yeah, it was easy to, to cherry pick. All right, cool. So, so we're, think, already, we're one minute over, by the way. Thank you, thank you for bringing yeah. that to my attention. <laughs> I was not paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> um, I should have done so let, Let's just wrap up on this uh, item, and then um, so it sounds like we we needed we do need an owner on this. Thomas soon might be the might might be able to own it. Um, what do you say, like Tom? You mean me? No, uh, no Thomas soon. Two two oh, Tomas. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so I think he. I mean, it seems like he intends to own it. If if not. Okay. We'll figure that out by the next meeting. Okay. So, All right, cool. Somebody, yeah, we'll somebody should them. send somebody should send me a message because um, I can give you the the commits of the the things that are important to sequential scrubs because there's the original patch and then Brian's right there was a follow on and then there was actually one more which fixed a deadlock. All right. How about I send you an email? And yeah, send me an email and I, I will respond to it with the commits. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, so yes, since we're a little bit over already, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you all for joining. Uh, let's finish with, uh, are there any additional agenda items? So be, besides continuing to go over this, the rest of this list um, and following up on the ones that we already looked at next time, um, are there other things that people would like to cover in this meeting uh, for next month? Uh, I have one thing that I'd like to cover. Um, I think a lot of us, especially since many of us really want to kind of look at 080 for ZFS as, uh, or I'm sorry, for ZFS on Linux is kind of like, you know, kind of a, a settling point where we can, you know, get a lot of things in sync and things like that. I think a lot of us would be interested in making sure that 080 is really, really stable. Um, and there are a bunch of like bugs and things that we know about just from the builders. Um, right now. Um, so if we could have some kind of concerted effort around that, I think that'd be good. Cool. Um, and unfortunately I have the next meeting coming in here now, so I don't really okay. have. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll um, I, I agree and let's discuss how to make that happen um, at the next meeting. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, uh, other agenda items for the future? None at present from us. 
Cool. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for uh, thank you for organizing this. This has been good. I think this is yeah. a good format. Good. All right. Well, um, then I will see you all uh, four weeks from today. Four weeks minus thirty four minutes from today, um, and I'll send out reminders. Um, if you uh, if you'd like to add your name to the attendee list, um, and also uh, maybe include your email if you don't know that I already have it, I will add you to the meeting invite um, so you can get that. And also uh, try to send out emails and tweets and stuff so that folks are reminded next month. Uh, and also post the recording of this on YouTube um, if your colleagues or friends want to look at it. Yeah, please. Uh, very exciting, actually. There's a few people we don't have affiliations for, the platform affiliations for. If you can add those, that'd be great. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. See you guys. How do I end the meeting?